Hello, it's Mrs. Rojas. Thank you for tuning in to Mrs. Rojas e-learning. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to cover um, April 27 in your um, packet all the way through May 1st, which is next week, okay? So I'm going to post the videos for you on Sunday and send your parents the link so you'll already have it for Monday and so you can be working day by day. This video will include the entire week for reading and also for math since they're short okay boys and girls please make sure that you're filling in this log for coach longoria also whatever you're doing um i think they included in your packets i believe you was for packet two uh they included some papers in there and information for music and for pe make sure that you're completing those because some of you are not getting grades for the music and, and um, math I mean, I'm sorry, for music and for PE. So make sure that you're sending Coach this log through his Remind app. It's in the forms, in the packet, okay? Or send me the pic and I can send it to Coach, okay? That way you can get credit for that. All right, so to, it's going to be for the Monday, April 27th for math. So for this one, we're actually going to take a social studies break for it as well. Remember, all your responses are still going on the math answer sheet for math and for the reading answer sheet for reading, Okay, so this week you should have already um, gotten the hang of reading what's here and answering on your math page or answering on your uh, reading answer page, okay? All right, so for math for this, for Monday, guys, 27, Monday the 27th, you're going to choose plants for rural or building for urban and draw an array with numbers bigger than five. Pretty much, you're not going to use one, two, three, four, or five, you need to go six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, or a little bit higher, okay? To make a multiplication fact, that's all you're doing, but you're creating an array, a drawing, okay? So I'm gonna do one example with you. You're gonna do a different one when you give me or send me your pick next week. Next week, I'm gonna actually want the picks earlier. So I'm gonna send you, uh, your parents, a message to send me the picks of your answer documents uh, by Wednesday. So Thursday will be your final day and then you'll send it to me again on Friday, okay? Just because we're posting for progress reports for that week, okay? So on Wednesday, you'll send me your picks, whatever you did for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. For the rest, you're gonna include it with the following week, okay? All right, so draw an array of objects. So urban, remember urban, it's um, you're living in a um, city, within the city, okay? That's part of, um, of the land, okay? So urban, it's living within the city. Typically, there's a lot of buildings and a lot of traffic. For rural, you know it's out in the country, like farming, right? So type of plants. If you're gonna draw plants, let's say I'm gonna draw um, maybe corn, okay? So corn, I don't know, or wheat. So I would draw an array. I'm going to represent the multiplication fact of let's say three, um, let's see, it says more than five. So I'm gonna do, six times three okay so that's going to be the multiplication fact that i'm going to solve i'm going to draw the picture for which means i'm going to draw how many rows how many in each row okay one two three oops so i'm going to draw six of these six of the of the rows so let me erase this so mine's going to be um six times three okay so then i keep drawing another row one two this is my third four five and six okay I'm gonna make them shorter now because I'm running out of space if you're doing the rural if you're doing urban then you would draw buildings instead of the plants okay so now I have um, this number of rows okay one two three four five six and three inside each good what would be my total for six times three 18 would be my total okay you go ahead and come up with your own example for monday and go ahead and draw it and answer it onto your math answer document here okay remember if you are going to draw you need to draw small because it needs to fit onto that answer document okay now for reading you can always go back and pause the video. Don't panic, you can always go back and pause. For reading, you're gonna pick one word from passage number two. So remember your passage page. 
So your passage page is this one, and I labeled them the first week. Uh, Leonid Rogozov, Rogozov, okay? So for him, you're going to read the story, okay? I'm going to read it to you right now. And then we're going to pick one word from the passage. We're going to write it. And then we're going to write a synonym for that word on the reading answer document. So remember, write the word and write um, a synonym for that, for that word. Okay? So let's go ahead and read. So go to your passage page. Follow with me. We're reading this one all week. Okay? Covering it all week. So it says, paragraph one. In 1960, the 6th Soviet Antarctic Expedition began. The members of the expedition set out to live in and explore the frigid regions of Antarctica. Among the people was a doctor named Leonid Rogozov. Okay, paragraph two. So right there, they're telling us location. They're telling us what he does. And there's expeditions. Remember like Lewis and Clark? Okay, Sacagawea. We read about that in social studies. So this is going to be also part of a social studies grade this week. Okay. So, um, it says, his job was to help members of the expedition. If they got injured or became ill during this explorations, the only problem, already telling you a problem, that's one of your keywords, um, was not long after the expedition began. Leonid was the one who became sick. He knew that he needed his appendix taken out and needed immediate surgery to survive. But a blizzard, boys and girls, that could be one word that you can pick. That's also part of weather, blizzards, right? There's different storms. So a blizzard wouldn't allow a help to arrive. Bravely, Leonid decided to perform surgery on himself. Wow. He gave himself a shot to deaden the area and began. Two other men helped him by holding a mirror and handing him tools he needed. He cut the area open and performed the delicate surgery. Miraculously, the surgery was successful. And that's a key word that's underlined as well. And Leonid made a full recovery. Now, that's amazing, right? Performing his own surgery, boys and girls. Imagine that, okay? Um, they ran into some problems there, right? Think about some of the problems that happened there, okay? All right, so your assignment for this story is to pick a word, write it, and write a synonym for it. So go to your reading answer document. So if I were to pick a word, I would say I would pick the word that was actually underlined, okay? So let me grab a pen here. I would pick the word that was underlined, which was successful. And I would write it down. Remember, you only have that much space. Then I'm going to think of another word that means the same. Remember, synonym means the same as successful. What do you think means the same as successful? Okay, so think about it. Another word that means the same as successful. Okay? So when if you think about it, you're going to write it here under synonym. Remember, you do not have to pick this word. You can pick any other word from the story but you need to think of a synonym for that word that you pick, okay? So remember, boys and girls, synonyms. Let's say if I was to say um, cold, I would need to think of another word that means the same as cold. I would say maybe freezing, okay? I would maybe think uh, chilly, right? Okay, that means those words mean the same as cold. So you need to come up with the word that means the same as maybe the word successful. Okay, if you pick a different word, then make sure that it means the same, okay? We've had practice with the synonyms and antonyms, okay? All right, and that's it for Monday, okay? Now, boys and girls, we're gonna go ahead and move on to Tuesday. So this would be the 28th for Tuesday. I'm gonna abbreviate them just so we can move on. Okay, so for Tuesday, boys and girls, for math, it says, so you can pause the video for your Monday and then uh, continue on for Tuesday. I'm already going on to Tuesday. For Tuesday, math, make a fact family for numbers greater than five. Include both X, uh, which means multiplication, and division sentences. Okay, so once again, we're going to do fact families. 
This time we're going to be working with multiplication and division. Remember boys and girls of fact family, I'm gonna give you one example. You can choose to use the same one. I wouldn't because then it's like you just copying my answers, right? So for your math answer document, go here. You're gonna write down the three digits that you're using for your fact family. Think of any multiplication fact that's greater than five. So let's say I'm gonna use the same one we did on Monday. I'm gonna say six, we said what? Six times three equals 18, okay? So I know that my fact family numbers are going to be six, three, and 18, right? Those are my only three digits that I'm going to use. So my fact family, I'm gonna do six times three equals 18. Then I'm gonna switch them. Three times six equals 18 and write them down. Then I'm gonna go to my division. Division, it looks like this. This also means the same as this, right? It means the same thing. So it's for division. Now I'm gonna use um, my large number. 18 divided by one of those parts equals the other part. I'm going to do the same again. This time I already used three, so now I'm going to use six equals three. Got it? That's your fact family for your math. Go ahead and make sure you make your own fact family. Think of any multiplication fact that you would like to work with, okay? And that's your uh, Tuesday. Now for reading. For reading, it says pick one word from the passage to write it and write an antonym. So just like we did on for Monday, you're going back to the same passage number two. You're gonna pick now a different word. You can actually stay with the same word that you picked for Monday. So I have picked successful for that word, boys and girls. If you want to keep the same word, but this time write the antonym. What is the opposite of successful? So remember my example, I had said it was cold, right? The opposite of cold now, because I'm working with antonym, means the opposite, lo opuesto. Now I'm gonna say hot, right? Or warm, okay? That means the opposite. So now if you're using the word successful, like we did on Monday, then I'll pick up something that means the opposite of successful. Okay, so instead of being successful, mm, not so much a success, what is that? It could be disappointment, okay? Failure, it could mean several, all right? Go ahead and make sure you do your answers on that reading page for Tuesday, all right? Now, boys and girls, I'm gonna go to Wednesday, which is April 29th, and that'll be my Wednesday. That's the top to my marker. Oh, here it is. Sorry. You just don't want it to dry out. Okay. So now for Wednesday. Let's look at Wednesday. For Wednesday, the 29th, for math, what temperature is shown? So this time we're going to do math with science, okay? So remember weather. This also kind of went with this other one, okay? Um, with the passage, actually. So weather. You're going to look at the thermometer that's on the answer document. You're going to need to read the thermometer. So it might look a little light, but wherever the mark stops, you need to write the temperature in Fahrenheit. So you're looking at this side, okay? Go ahead and write your temperature there. Okay, I'm gonna help you with that one. It stopped on what? 90. Now if this temperature goes up three degrees warmer, you are adding more. So you're gonna add three more to this one. What is your new temperature? You're gonna write it down right there. Remember for thermometers, boys and girls in science, if it goes high, then it is getting hotter. If the temperature drops, then it becomes colder, right? That's the kind of weather that I like, all right? Okay, now that's your math. Make sure you answer that. For math, for reading, for Wednesday, that's also going to be social studies grade as well. Remember I talked about it on the Monday lesson about expedition. So for Wednesday, write what an expedition is and tell where you would take an expedition to. So if you need to go back, boys and girls, and reread his expedition, right? His expedition began 
Soviet Union, uh, Soviet Antarctic, right? Freezing weather, okay? And it was to explore the regions of Antarctica. That's where he went. That's where he traveled. Because he was an explorer, just like Lewis and Clark in Sacagawea, right? Where they were mapping out our world, pretty much, right? So, for you, if you were an explorer going on an expedition, um, where would you take the expedition to? Where would you go? Where would you like to go explore? Okay, so you're thinking location for this one, okay? So, on your reading answer document here for Wednesday... I want you to tell me what an expedition is. What does it mean? Well, an expedition means what? You go to different places, right? So you travel to different places, okay? Now, where would you go? That's where I want you to write on that section. Where would you travel to, okay? That's going to be it for your Wednesday, okay? Now, boys and girls, you can pause the video for now, and then we're going to go into our Thursday lesson, okay? So this is my Thursday. I'm abbreviating these days. <clears throat> Just for time. Okay, so now for math for Thursday. Your assignment is for Thursday, ask a family member to pick two numbers from one to 10. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They can pick any of those numbers, okay? They need to pick two. Now, use those numbers to write a multiplication fact. So let's say, for example, um, I asked my husband, go ahead and pick a number one through ten. Any number, one through ten. Uh, let's say he picks number eight and he picks number uh, three, okay? Now, with these numbers, I'm going to make a multiplication fact, okay? So I'm gonna say eight times three. What does it get? What do you get? 24. And I know I can do the opposite of that, switch them around, and I'm still getting the same result. Got it? Okay, you do the same for fun. You can do several, actually, um, but I'm just requiring you to do the one. Go ahead and write it down, okay? And you can even draw your groups to show me your results or give me more examples, okay? That's going to be it for your math for uh, Thursday. Now for uh, reading, change the ending to passage two. <gasps> okay, now they're challenging you. So on your reading answer page right here, you're going to put your new ending to the story, Leonode, Leonid Rogos, or that, can't say the name, Rogozov. So the ending, that's paragraph three. So it says, bravely, Leonid decided to perform surgery on himself. He gave himself a shot to deaden the area and began. Two other men helped him by holding a mirror and hand, hand, handing him tools he needed. He cut the area open and performed the delicate surgery. Miraculously, the surgery was successful and Leonid made a full recovery. Now that's amazing. So if you were to retell this story here, how would you change this last part? What could you take away? What could you add, make it your own story, okay? So maybe um, somebody came during the blizzard and did the surgery themselves. Um, maybe one of the men decided to attempt to do the surgery and save his life, okay? So think about a different ending, okay? How would you want the story to end? Maybe at the end, um, you can even add to it. Um, a helicopter came and they were rescued, okay? Um, and he didn't have to perform his own surgery, okay? So think about it. Think about what you would write as your new ending, okay? So that is it for your Thursday. You can go ahead and pause the video. And we're going to move on to our Friday lessons, okay? And Friday, we're actually changing the entire month. Friday now, boys and girls, becomes May. And it's May, May 1st. Okay? All right, so for math for, Monday, uh, for May 1st on Friday, find four three-dimensional shapes at your house and list them. Remember 3D shapes, boys and girls? Just like my cube, could be a three-dimensional shape. It pops out, right? Okay? So three-dimensional shape. The marker itself is a three-dimensional shape. It's not flat, okay? 
you need to find um, three, uh, uh, four different shapes that are three-dimensional, okay, and then list them, okay? That's going to be for your math. So go to your math answer sheet. You're going to name me the object. What did you find? Well, let's say me, I had my expo marker. So right here, I would write marker, and then I would write down the shape it is. So what kind of a shape is that? Oh, it's a cylinder. So I would write down cylinder. It wasn't a cone, it wasn't a cube. Okay, so remember some of our, our three-dimensional shapes. Okay, so we have a cylinder. What did we have? A cube. We had the sphere. That's like a ball, right? Uh, we had rectangular prism. All of our prisms, Rick, oh, I spelled that. You had your pyramid, right? You had so many other different shapes, wasn't gross and three dimensional. So think and look around your house, go ahead and list them and then tell me the name of the shape. Okay, so that's your math for Friday. Now for uh, Friday for reading, you're going to circle your favorite type of story and tell why. Persuade, inform, entertain. Okay? All right. So go to your reading answer page right here. Circle one, persuade, inform, or entertain. I want you to actually use the story of the week, which is Leonite, um, the one that we just finished reading right here. And I want you to tell me if this story was to persuade was it to inform or was it to entertain you? Okay? Persuading. Remember, persuading meaning what? Were they trying to convince you to do something? Was he convincing you in the story to do something? Was he giving you information about himself, about what he did? Or was he entertaining you? Was he making you laugh in the story? Okay? Think about it. Okay? Go ahead and write down your response on your um, response reading answer sheet. And these are your lessons for the week of April 27th through May 1st for reading and for math. Okay, boys and girls, please make sure, don't forget about sending in these logs. You can send me the picture, okay, tell your parents, or you can send them directly to Coach Longoria, okay, or to Mr. Garza. I don't know what music assignments they included in your packet number two. Whatever it is, whatever you're doing music, go ahead and maybe send a picture to him or send it to me and I can forward it to him for a grade for you, okay? All right, boys and girls, um, I will be posting progress reports uh, next week. So that's why grades will be due by Wednesday and I will be posting them on Thursday. So really you have until Thursday morning, okay? So make sure that you get those things done, okay? Um, and I will be sending your parents messages as well. I will also be telling your parents about online registration. So if your parents are not aware, please let them know. We're going to be online registration. Vamos a hacer el registro sobre línea. Okay, les voy a llamar yo el martes. I will be calling you boys and girls uh, for your parents on Tuesday uh, to ask them some questions. Para hacerles unas preguntas, les voy a llamar el martes a todos los padres, okay? Um, ya, ya está abierto para hacer registro sobre la, la línea, el internet, o pueden llamar a la escuela 427-3170 um, y ahí también les pueden ayudar. Okay, so they can also help you there. Um, also, Parent Access Center, that's for you to be able to see your child's grades. Um, para tener acceso al centro de padres, eso es para ver las calificaciones también de sus hijos. Si necesitan el, el código, el, el número para meterse, um, pueden llamar a la escuela y ahí les pueden ayudar para la de las información también. Okay? All right, boys and girls, go ahead and have a great weekend. Stay safe. Bye.